competency is not revolutionary. I'm expected to do basic things every day for three hours. Nobody asked me to be perfect. It's not about being perfect. I'm ad-libbing for three hours. Nobody asks your job. You don't have to be, even as a pilot, not every landing is nailed. Not every takeoff is perfect. Just don't, you know, crash the thing. Um, Rob Palenka is the Lakers GM. Watching Laker fans react to common sense moves over the weekend was quite something. Common sense moves. So, yes, the Lakers did have a, did have a good weekend because they didn't do anything dumb. They didn't sign Russell Westbrook, right? So Palenka moved off Russell Westbrook. That was an obvious move. There's no reason for a parade. Why'd you sign him? So first of all, they retained two guys they needed to. Austin Reeves, I like him a lot, don't love him, but they got a reasonable contract and they retained him. They should. Not a pure point, not a pure shooter, but he plays well with LeBron. He initiates contract can get other guys into foul trouble, works really hard. It's a reasonable price. They also retained Rui Hachimura. Long, nice body type in today's NBA, can guard the wing, good size. We saw Denver winning a title with size. Milwaukee won a title with size. I like Rui. Good players. Sometimes great nights, but good players. And Rob Palenka smartly retained them. He also added size to help Anthony Davis. He got Jackson Hayes, who's had some off-court trouble. Really, really talented young big. AD sometimes overwhelmed against Jokic and overwhelmed against the big when he's the Lakers' only big down uh, low with size and athleticism. So Jackson Hayes is a nice piece. AD also gets hurt a lot. He's going to miss 25 games. So Jackson Hayes, good common sense piece, comes with a little baggage but talented kid. They also added shooting with Gabe Vincent from Miami. Now, it should be noted, Pat Riley, who's brilliant, would not pay him what the Lakers would. But he did shoot 38% on threes in the playoffs. He was very good in clutch situations. Miami in the playoffs, Lakers last year in the playoffs, LA's a big stage. I like the Gabe Vincent contract more probably than I'd like to sign him for. But he can play. And he's played in big games, but Pat Riley did let him go. They also moved off Dennis Schroeder, who's been a bounce around the NBA guy for a long time. Talented, played hard for the Lakers, but a very erratic player you can't trust. Now, I would have bailed on D'Angelo Russell, but Rob Palenka deserves credit. It's only a two-year deal, meaning after next year, it'll be an expiring contract player. You'll be able to move him. He also can shoot. Now, he's erratic. He was awful against Denver. He's untrustable. He was benched. I would have tried to move off him. I'm sure the Lakers looked around for another guy that could add shooting, probably didn't want to pay for it or couldn't find him. So I even get the D'Lo move. It's a two-year deal. Those are the best deals. If Kyrie Irving's deal with Dallas was two years, it'd be a lot better than three. You have him for a year, you can move him after a year. None of these moves are Danny Ainge. They didn't reshape the roster. They retained the right two guys. They acquired some nice players. Cam Reddish is a nice player. They got him for a nickel. He's not going to change anything in May and June. And if LeBron and AD do, as they are prone to do, get banged up in the regular season, hopefully cross your fingers not late in the regular season, none of this stuff's going to matter. These aren't guys winning playoff series. But the Lakers have been such a mess for most of the last nine and ten years that competency is viewed as revolutionary. These are basic moves that any smart GM could make. I liked almost all of them. Austin Reeves, absolutely want him back. There's a reason there wasn't a gigantic market for Austin Reeves. He's an old 25, a lot of years of college. We're closer to his ceiling than anybody wants to acknowledge. He averages 10 a game. I think it'll go to 15 or 16. He's the third best player in a playoff team, but if AD or LeBron got hurt and he had to be the second, you're not winning a playoff series against the Western Conference team next year because most of them are better. Don't turn competency and GM 101 into revolutionary. Nobody reshaped the roster. 
brought back the right guys, moved off the right guys, got some cheap contracts. It's a nice weekend for the Lakers. All right, so I was uh, watching this weekend the greatest Major League player of my life, the single best Major League Baseball talent of my life. Yeah, it's not close. It's Shohei Otani. Now, I wasn't around for Babe Ruth or Ty Cobb. He's better. Bo Jackson was good. He couldn't pitch. Uh, oh, Shohei Otani had quite a weekend, bomb after bomb after bomb against the D-backs. Does everybody understand what we're watching here? He leads baseball in all the big power stats, extra base hits, OPS, RBIs tied, home runs. He's also 7-3 and three on the mound. He doesn't really have a comp. You could say, well, MJ was the best offensive player and defensive player, but we demand that our NBA players actually play defense. Everybody except James Harden does. I'm talking about maybe Michael Phelps, who won 23 gold medals. The next closest was nine, and he was dominant in multiple swim categories. That's about the comp. <laughs> Michael Phelps, the greatest Olympian of all time. But this is what globalization does, and it's an amazing thing to sports. The best two NBA players now are Giannis and Jokic, highly skilled bigs. And in America, the way it works is, is that specialization in a lot of different fields is key, probably because of our uh, capitalistic nature. Uh, you know, the more money you can make, the better. Everything's about specializing in this and specializing in that. If you're in tech, you're, you're a programmer or you're a coder. It's specializing. And in sports, you can shoot threes well. Uh, you're, you're a rim protector. You're, now, LeBron was the exception, did almost everything well, but he's never been a great long-distance shooter. But Europeans are different. The world is different. It's not about specializing. It's about if you want to get to America and make the most money in professional sports, because that's where all the money is, outside of international soccer, the big money in basketball and baseball is in this country, it's be great at many things, make yourself better, your team better, highly skilled. You watch European basketball players. They do multiple things well. I mean, Jokic can pass. He's an elite passer, elite shooter. He can rebound. He can direct traffic. He can handle the ball. But never had a center like Jokic. Embiid won the MVP, but it was more of an anti-Jokic vote. He's a much more layered player, and it's not particularly close than our bigs, especially the old bigs, like the, the Wilts and the Shaqs or the Akeems. And Shohei Otani does everything well. And what's remarkable is how he garners all this power. He's 210 pounds. It's unbelievable. He's got like Aaron Judge power, 210-pound guy. He runs. He hits for power. He hits for average. He's a dominant pitcher. Um, highly skilled at a lot of things. It's part of what I'm watching with the globalization of sports. Now, I don't know if those players will always be as popular as domestic players, it is clearly an advantage in college basketball to be on television during March Madness and introduce Zion to us. You know, we didn't watch Jokic or Giannis first couple of years unless you were in Denver or in Milwaukee. But Shohei Otani, there's just nothing else even close. I mean, I love Bo Jackson. Wasn't pitching. Unbelievable weekend by the best pure. I know, I know you love Babe. And I know baseball fans romanticize the past. I get it. It's the sport. That's why there's so many great books on baseball. That's why baseball is so great on radio. It's the sport of storytelling and history and lore. Football is about next Sunday. NBA is about the playoffs. Soccer is about the next goal. But I know we romanticize, but Babe didn't do this simultaneously. This is absolutely remarkable. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.